Welcome to the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. It's March the 12th, 2021. Thanks for being here. So topics that I've got, open action items to discuss, then open container labeling, Gareth, that you'll take on. I wanted to do a brief review of SheCode Africa and then coordinating proposed Docker changes is a topic. Are there other topics we need to add to the agenda? Okay, great. Then let's let's go ahead. So we've got still the open action item on Docker operating system support. This one is becoming even more vital for us as more and more people are asking things that would fit within the within the context of this. Just yesterday, there was a, a pull request submitted asking to add Docker as a command line inside the the Jenkins agent, one of the Jenkins agent images. And for me, I feel like that feels like a security disaster waiting to happen, and I'm worried about doing it. And, and yet there's, there are parts of the community that very much want it. And so that needs, a, needs this, the, the, the management framework of this JEP to help us decide which things we allow in and which we don't. So the, the, that, propo, that pull request asking to please add the Docker and executable into the agent image felt, felt really risky to me and I was spooked by it. So I've still also got the action item on the plugin installation manager and update center blog post. We're probably still a week or two away. We've got Alex's PR on install plugins. Thanks, Alex, very, very much for doing that. Um, I need to update it. Oh, um, okay. I, had, I had also upgraded um, the plugin installation manager at the same time, but there have been, there's been some conflicting updates, so I need to fix those conflicts. Ah, okay, great. Well, and I'm not going to be able to review this for, for probably several days or a week at least. So th that's not a crisis if you if that needs to take a little time. Okay, cool. Great. All right. Thank you again for doing that. Um, we had a re discussions on further parallelization and acceleration. During the contributor summit, it was agreed that that acceleration of the builds is a crucial part of our roadmap. I'll get that onto the roadmap actually, and that's an action item I need to put. Mark, uh, deliver the roadmap adjustments, changes based on the contributor summit. Sorry, I haven't done that yet. Um, will do. Any other action items that we need to note here that have been missed? Okay, next topic, open container labeling. Uh, Gareth, you wanna take this one on? Uh, yes, yeah, so, so we'd, we'd previously discussed around um, adding in the either the open OCI spec or the label schema spec labels. Um, one of the concerns that was raised that was that it would be um, probably not possible to do with the, the builds that we have on Docker Hub. Um, but the, what we have found is there is, is a way of getting most of those um, labels added nicely, actually, using Docker Hub. So Docker Hub um, supplies a couple of build arcs that you can use to add, um, configure most of the labels you need. Um, certainly around commit and URL and things like that. The one that it doesn't supply is build date, but there is a method or, or a way that we can use a custom build hook to supply that if we want to go down that route. It just means that we don't have to move off Docker Hub's infrastructure for building those images just yet. Um, obviously we, we, we can do if we want to in the future, but it, it just adding these labels doesn't become the only reason that we want to move off. For me, that sounds great. So that's something conceptually, you could submit a pull request to the images to, to apply these, these build time labels, and we could already see them based on the build hook examples at Docker Hub. Yeah. Nice. 
Alex, any objections from you on, on us considering going ahead with that? No, that sounds great because that reduces our costs. So, or keeps the cost the same, doesn't increase our costs. Right, so, right. Well, and, and I assume these steps are probably not terribly expensive in terms of build time. So the, and, and if they are, we want to know that, right? I assume that they're not going to increment the, the build time for the images on Docker Hub. They, they shouldn't do, no. Yeah, great. All right, so that's a decision agreed that Great, thank you. Anything else on that topic, Gareth? Gareth, so I suppose, you right? oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, I was only gonna ask like, where, I wasn't 100% certain where the repos were, where these builds lived, so that I could have a go at um, applying a PR with this. That, that's, I was wondering if you had access to the Docker Hub uh, repository oh. so you can make these changes. I don't think I have, I have access, I probably have access to GitHub repositories, although I'm not sure where they are, but I don't think I have Docker Hub um, access I mean, to that the, one. The initial one would be the Jenkins CI Docker. That's just the one that builds the, um, the controller image. Yep, okay. Um, then there's Jenkins CI uh, Docker-Agent. Um, do, Jenkins CI uh, inbound Docker agent, I think. Yeah, so and then is there then SSH agent? That's... Yeah, there's, and then there's the Docker SSH agent. Okay, I can and, take a look at some of those and try and push them to us. I thought those did not have inside the repository the uh, the details of the Docker Hub configuration. I thought that was done interactively at Docker Hub. Uh, that's true, but it's, so Mark, you may want to put Docker SSH agent because there's an SSH agent plugin. Oh, oh, thanks, right. Yeah, thank you very much, okay. Um, and Docker SSH agent does not inherit from the Docker agent, just FYI. Ah, yeah. oh, okay. <clears throat> Um, so we have Jenkins on Docker Hub. We have Jenkins um, Jenkins, which is the controller. We have Jenkins Agent, which corresponds to the um, the Docker Agent. Um, and I don't remember what the other ones are right now. I, I can look those up. So is this one where it's it, it would be good to pair? Gareth, you and, and Alex together to, to look at this. I assume we have to ask for ask for infra permission to be granted. And so that's a request separately, but then then or are I'm you already not, comfortable? Yeah, I mean I'm not I'm not actually sure we need Docker Hub because because a lot of this stuff, Docker Hub, it's all it's all controlled from the repo. So Oh it is. Yeah. So we should be able to do it over a pull request. Okay. So let me let, let me let me try it out and um so something happened. And because we know that, that the, the, access the, yeah. would help, just let me know. And okay. we can also get you access to, I, I mean, it's not a big deal. Cool. Great. So you'll, you'll first try with pull request to the Jenkins CI repo, see if you can find a way to configure it there. That's certainly the preferred way then we've got it as code, tracked with pull requests, tracked with changes. Okay. Yeah. Great, thank you. Anything else on open container labeling? Okay, next topic then. The She Code Africa April Contribute-Thon, not that it directly impacts us, but just so you're aware, um, a, a group called She Code Africa is focused on increasing the contributions to open source and in, increasing the technical skills of women in Africa. And uh, one of our docs contributors, Zina Abu Bakar, is a leader in that group and made, made us aware that beginning in April, they have a contribute thon where they will, for one month, pay 
women in Africa who have been who have joined the program and who have been qualified, etc., to contribute to open source software. And what they asked for was sp sponsoring organizations, uh, mentoring projects, and Jenkins, we've got good alignment to be a mentoring project for this. So Kristen Whetstone, me, and Meg McRoberts have all agreed to be mentors for it. And we've got a project idea. I'll be submitting a, a, an email summary of this to the Jenkins developers mailing list today. And uh, we'll be submitting a pull request to the Jenkins.io doc site for to describe what this thing is. If you're interested in participating, certainly let me know. Then the next topic was coordinating proposed Docker changes. So um, Alex or Gareth, are there any specific things here? We've talked already about installed plugins and I we haven't had much chance to make progress on multi-arch builds. Any of these others that need to be discussed in more depth while we're here? Not that I can think of. Okay. I know that this non-root user one is is as far as I can tell still progressing and some of the images defined here are being shifted to be homed inside Jenkins infra so that we can use them for infrastructure without confusing people that they are somehow published and public for anybody. We're intentionally using them for Jenkins infra and not assuming others will use them. Did I, did I understand that correctly, Gareth? Did I say that right? Yeah, I think so, yep. Okay. Okay. And the coordinated announcement of several changes there, that's just going to wait. That covered all the topics that I was aware of today. Anything else we need to include on today's discussion? Not for me. Have we had any um, chats about uh, security scanning these images? Ah, we have, that's a good topic. Uh, so let's let's give at least what I know currently. So um, I've been experimenting with Mark experimented with sneak scanning and Linux Foundation has um, an offering that we can use that we are already subscribed to for a commercial a commercial license, if you will, a commercial grade sneak installation. And it's uh, scans are already available. What we my, <clears throat> sorry, ahead, Alex, I was gonna say my, my main concern is that our stuff on top of the base images is not a lot. So most the security issues are going to be in the base images themselves. So I don't know how much benefit it will actually be for us to just find issues in the base images. That, that's my concern. <clears throat> if there's no way for us to fix the, um, the issue because the base image hasn't been updated, then um, us publishing security issues or whatever on these images is, I, I don't know how helpful that would be. I suppose it, it may give us some data to say whether or not we want to keep on supporting a particular um, base image in the future. Well, I mean, even the Debian image the, with Debian Buster, which is the, the quote unquote newest version of Debian that's stable, has lots of issues from my understanding. Right. So so it, that's our, our main controller image base is the Debian Buster. So I, I just don't think we're going to I think it's good to know, but I, I don't think it should be like published necessarily because it's it's just the, it, my guess it's going to be almost like 99.99% base image issues. Yeah, so I think you raise a good point, Alex. How do we make this useful to us rather than a hindrance? And, and, and that's, a, that's a piece that I'm still not clear on. Um, I had been worrying how do we how do we make it so that the 
so that the process of resolving a of marking an, an issue as not an issue or as oh we're not going to do it was easy and low effort but i think your your observation is even more important that most of the issues will be in the base images because in terms of size of of contribution the debian base image is several hundred megabytes and we're adding another 60 megabytes is all so just if if it we're looking at security issue by byte count, I would expect more to come from the base image anyway. So. So I think it, it, it's, it, it, it may, so, so if, if you look at sort of like Docker best practices, they tend to be moving more towards like trying not to wherever possible base your stuff off like a complete install of Debian um, with a lot of things that you may not need. Um, so try to keep them as small as possible. So you may find that selecting an alternative or more of a slim down base image may be beneficial. Um, well, a distro list is a good one that actually that I would uh, mention. I mean, I, I'm uh, cool with that. Yeah. We, it just like do we, do we then just reduce to that one image? And I would I would be interested to understand like exactly why or the community want like you know a Ubuntu image rather than a Debian image or something like that. What what is the what is the bit that they're getting from that? Yeah. Well, and, and there, I think the, the key motivation was we like being based on the adopt open JDK image that they're providing because we like, we, we had the evolution originally had been, hey, we'll choose to base ourselves on Debian and then we install open JDK. And then we learned painfully that there are times when Debian doesn't maintain their open JDK as well as adopt open JDK does. So we said, let's shift and make ourselves based on the adopt open JDK images. Uh, and they they have a set that they've selected, and it might be that we would could consider okay, should we ask them to to add additional support for another image? Right now, I think it's an intentional choice to use them. Yeah, they, they have a UBI image um, for sure. I think it's oh, not it's part of their experimental, which means it's just not built by Docker uh, Docker Hub and released by Docker Hub. But I'm pretty sure they have a UBI image and they're experimental. So that could be a possibility. Um, I, I'm not super familiar with UBI, but if it's one of these ones that would be better, then maybe we do look at that. Well, and, and we've already got Slim. So, so that piece, and we've got Alpine. Um, though, what one we don't have, for example, that that I see in the in the open J9 images, the, the IBM kind of images is they seem to seem to have a preference for Ubuntu, at least in in the J9 images. And I, I, I can't claim one way or the other over over Debian or even over UBI. And, and it's, again, I guess it would be a question to ask the op Adopt Open JDK people how they choose which images they're going to, to maintain or not maintain. So Gareth, did, did, that, did that address, have we addressed the question there? I'm not sure the next steps for us in terms of um, we could, we could do more investigation to understand what we could use of the Linux Foundation offering and how to get, how to be more effective with it. Yeah, I think, I think it, I, I don't know how it works. Um, I think maybe it'd be worth yeah, understanding. Yeah, how do we, how do we configure it to at least scan the, scan the, some images and then we'll try and work out what to do with that data. Yeah, the and if I remember correctly, I, I well, 
I don't know that it'll help us here, but I could I can navigate to the Linux Foundation page if you'd like. Maybe maybe what I should do is let me put a link to that in in the uh, LFX security. I'll put a link to it in the in the notes so that we've got it. It is where is code scanning is an help Linux Foundation. the Linux Foundation and now projects nope about oh LFX tools here it is okay LFX tools and well sorry I oh yes there it is Alex LFX security okay so this is the thing and now where is yeah okay here here we are <laughs> okay good all right, so so we're here. I haven't even signed in yet, and we're here. So so this, I'm just going to drop that into the notes. So are they already scanning something? Yes, they are. They're already oh, scanning, yeah. and and the scans. Hang on, I'm going to sign in, and we can look at them together. Um, if there's something that we find that's last time I was in here. The things that were there were not so super sensitive that I had to edit them out of any recording. So, so let's just go. And now, if I remember right, there is something about where I have to click here. Oh, it's it's that's the total repos. It's only scanning thirty three of the twenty four hundred. Uh, I don't know. Hang on, just a minute. Let's get there because I think I've got access. Oh no. Okay. Platform SIG leader would like to scan results. I thought that they'd given me access because, but we'll see. All right. There, cool. Okay. So it, and it knows who I am. So the request has been submitted. Cool. Yeah, and, and so clearly they've got some data because they're highlighting what looks like it looks it looks real ish. And I think Oleg had shown once the, the same thing. Now, how many repositories they're scanning? Yeah, that that I don't know. i I had assumed this was Docker image scans, not scans of Java source code. And I think that's what I had seen earlier. The I've got a, a personal sneak account that I'm using to scan some of my images. And, and this felt like that the last time I saw something in it. So I assume that, um, Gareth, one of the things is you probably need to, if you don't already have it, get a Linux foundation, register yourself for a Linux foundation account ask for access to the uh, to the data and let's see what we get. Any anything else on the security scanning topic? Okay. Any other topics before we close the meeting? All right, thanks everybody. Recording will be posted in an hour or two.